Well, Dave, it's great to sort of have you in front of us right now. I guess this is the way we are doing it. I think we've adapted, and, and you've certainly done quite a bit of that, which has been great to see, a lot to get to with you, but um, something I am so excited about, and I hope everybody is able to, to tune in for uh, coming up starting on Friday, and it will premiere on the Mariners Channel on YouTube, uh, a Black Voices in Baseball virtual panel, which you lead, and uh, you look at the group that is sitting down, and you look at the Mariners we're going to hear from D. Gordon, J.P. Crawford, Kyle Lewis, Shed Long, yourself. Uh, you, you've done these before, but now I would imagine is, is very different. What, what are we going to hear and see in this? Well, you're going to see the most experienced player, D. Gordon, probably speak the most. The other guys have some interesting anecdotes as well. But the, the, I think the thrust is the ability to speak freely without fear of repercussions and to explain some of the things that have happened to them as uh, young uh, black men and high-enders, too, and frankly, you know, as, ma as Major League Baseball players. But the one thing that that I have in common with them and, 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 and we have in common with all black men in America is that that could have been one of us in Minnesota with a, a knee on the neck. Could have been, and that's what I wrote about in my uh, guest column in the uh, Seattle Times a couple of weeks ago. Vulnerability is, uh, we talk a lot about that and about how oftentimes in, in many environments you walk in and you're guilty until you, until you prove yourself innocent. And you feel like you know, you're a threat. people look at you as a threat. They find out you're a ball player or, or something. Somebody once said to me, well, you're a celebrity. I said, yeah, and of a, a, a minor vintage, but guess what? That doesn't get me on the subway here in New York. Uh, just looking for equality. That's all we're looking for. Don't want to be target practice. And uh, so I quoted um, a great civil rights leader from back in the 60s, you know, tired of, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And too many of these stories lately have been exploding across our, our social media. And uh, on TV, every news cycle, unarmed black man, unarmed black man, unarmed black man. You know. Meanwhile, five-year anniversary of the shooting down in uh, South Carolina, I think it was Charleston, a church man shot up. There's nine innocent black churchgoers get shot up by a guy, and they take him alive. And, you know, the guy in Atlanta gets shot in the back. I mean, please. And, you know, we're tired of it. And, and, and I, you know, I speak for them as, you know, as, a black, as an African-American. I told them, I said, it's a generation or two older than you guys. And I lived. I was a little kid in the '60s. This is this is almost out of, as out of hand as it was then. Points back right around the time I was born in middle late '50s into the mid '60s. So it's a pretty frank and honest discussion, and I enjoyed it. And I think the guy. It was nice to get some stuff off your chest. I saw the advance on it, and we are just, I guess. Unfortunately, it's shocking because it happens, and it's unfortunately shocking because it's the first time that it's widely heard or widely listened to, but the individual stories that we are hearing from people, and, and unfortunately, the, it, it's all the same. Um, when you hear Kyle Lewis talk about what he found in his locker one day in baseball, I don't think anyone wants to believe that happens, and that happens. What impact has that had on these these players, and what did you get from Kyle on well, that? You know, um, I think like myself, and you get hardened to it, and after a while, you know, it it, it angers you, but you got a job to do too at the same time. But it makes you reevaluate your relationships with people with whom you work, and now I have an eye raise and a scant look like who did that and his reaction is pretty much the same and, and, and I'll, you're not going to see much variance uh, in reaction to, to the stories the guys were telling or how they feel about certain situations well, hopefully people are hearing and, and being further educated that it's not okay just to say that's not okay at some point you need your your teammates and people to stand up for you and I think that in some ways, we're seeing that throughout the country and what we have seen in a lot of the protests that well, are going on right now. No question about it. And that was one of the things I asked the guys about. What kind of, what's your, what has been the relationship in the clubhouse, white guys and the black guys, 
we get 10 black guys on a 40 man roster, which is unheard of these days. I didn't even bother looking to see any, who has, there's nobody close. There's no way. And I said, and for this moment, I mean, given the nature of baseball, given the nature of our GM, as we try to build to be a, a consistent playoff team, there's going to be moves made, and we're not always going to have 10 African Americans on the ball club. But I'm going to enjoy, and they, and I agree, they're going to enjoy this time together and do the, you know, the best they can, obviously as players, but as people and in the community, in the world that we live in right now. Uh, it's not just the country that is aggrieved by what has happened recently. It's the entire world. They're tired of seeing the exploitation and just the criminality. And, and again, I know that there has to be police reform. You know, there's, there's so many things that have to be done. I know there's the, the Congress is working on something, and I hope it's something that's sensible, that's re that, that has some teeth into it, and that police, and the bad ones, will be held accountable. That's all we're asking. To be fair, and I, you know, and, and there's one. Somebody told a story. I think it was JP about getting stopped. We've all been stopped. It's not fun. You try it on for size. It's not fun. And uh, and you're again, you're automatically. It, it, it's it's mind numbing. It's almost to the point where, you know, I, I could it, to the point where you could absolutely explode. And it, I sit there and I'm listening to these stories, and I'm like this. And I know, you know, things that I've, I've been very lucky. You know, one of my sons, he seemed a great kid, clean record. Nothing's ever happened to him. But, you know, he was, you know, some cops uh, stopping him. One time it was with my wife. And I was like, really? Come on. Every the suspicion. And just because a black guy is in a good neighborhood and a good car, maybe he can afford it. Maybe he does live there. Okay? You ever consider that? I got too many stories of uh, my black friends who are football players or baseball players or former players, and they've all had stories like that. It's got to stop. It's ridiculous. One of the things that we've seen, and this has been, um, it, it, for me, it's been so good to see because baseball has always been the sport. What happens in the clubhouse stays in the clubhouse. Don't ever say too much. You know, you don't want to uh, on any matter or issue. And I'm seeing, I don't want to say they're finding their voices, but I'm definitely hearing more from some of the younger players right now. And for me, you know, J.P. Crawford, Shed Long, and some of them are realizations. I know that Shed tweeted, I now understand why my mother was nervous every time I left the house. Things like that. You know, when that just hit you, right? You know, it, right. It, I, yeah, I tell a story about my son one day after a long day at work and he came home and he had dinner and at 10 o'clock and he puts his hoodie on and he's going, I said, where are you going? I said, I'm going for a jog. He said, dude, you ain't going for You're not going for a jog at 10 o'clock. No way. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. Not even here in New York City. Not going to happen. Don't do it. Not going to do it. Uh, yeah, those stories are, are, everybody's got stories like that. Um, I will say this, and I asked, one of, I asked the guys uh, about the rest of the, their teammates, and they said they've heard from a lot of guys. Say, mm -hmm. hey, man, you know, well, we got your back. Don't worry about it. We got your back. We're with you. And and uh, somebody, I, I think it was Shed or somebody said something about, it. if you're with us, great. If you're not, all right, we understand. So we, we talk a lot about, uh, about that. It was, uh, we went, I think we went 70 minutes, probably cut it down to about 58. We could have gone, we could have gone 170 minutes. And uh, it, it was, I can't believe I'm at this stage in my life where I'm leading these kinds of discussions. And <laughs> but I, I'm glad the fact, I'm glad for the fact that I do have some years on me and I've, I, I, and I've seen a lot and done a lot and, and I can relate to these young guys and I'm not saying I, you know, I'm going to be you know, some father figure, but you know, we, we have, we've had interesting discussions and the fact that all of this has happened now has opened the gates for everybody. Uh, white people, every, people of all, you know, sizes, shapes, denominations, the whole thing. People are want to be engaged. I've had people call me. I had a guy call me yesterday, a good friend of mine. I've been worried about you since May 25th when uh, George Floyd got killed. I was worried about you and your family. He started crying. And I've had emails from a couple of people in the organization and, and people in baseball. Hey, man, I got your back. Anything I can do to support you? So it's an awakening. I hope, it, I hope everybody stays awake to this. I hope everybody gets involved, contribute to organizations that are anti-racist, 
that are pro or pro, you know, pro Americans, all inclusive Americans. There's one more reason why it would be great to get these guys out on the field about right now. You know, I saw the picture that a lot of them tweeted of, of everybody from the end of last year. And it was just like you, you looked at that and it's just like, how great would it be? Yeah, you know, they are using their platform right now, which is fantastic. It is none of this, you know, well, it's not my job. I'm just a ball player. It is fantastic to see that. But to even be able to, if you were able to take that out to the field and have a bigger platform at this time and the Mariners, just to see that group, you know who those guys are. Yeah, no question. And I think athletes all around, I mean, you got that Oklahoma State running back who called out his coach. And you got the Florida State uh, defensive tackle called out his coach. I think <clears throat> right now, guys, and Kaepernick started it four years ago, and his whole thing, you know, was about this very topic we're talking about now. It's nothing against the flag, nothing against the military, four squared support, both. However, police brutality and racism got to be ended, all right? And that, that's what it comes down to. That's the message right there. That's why guys were taking a knee. A knee. And I'm curious to see, uh, you know, even if they don't take a knee, I know where they stand. But it'll be interesting to see. Black guys take the knee, and white guys uh, will take the knee if, if they indeed do something like that at some point. Yeah. I hope that we, we have that opportunity to see that out on the field, and I hope we continue to see what we're seeing with um, you know, uh, baseball doing their part, at least while they can't play, to sort of lead the way here and, and keep it going. It was great to see the video. I understand that D. Gordon had a lot to do that. We haven't even talked about him, but I, I love him. You know, We've got to be the adults in the room here, and, and I love – the, the tack that he, he takes. Yeah, he kept saying, <clears throat> we got something for you coming up. I can't tell you about it right now. And it turned out it was like that thing was released. And I got an early copy of it about an hour or two later. And, and I enjoyed it. Uh, it was very similar to what the NFL uh, players did, and, and which basically called out Commissioner Roger Goodell. But these the base, the black baseball players, they made a statement. All right, so it was behind the NFL. So what? The point being, they said their piece. They're using their platform. And as we move forward, hopefully we'll see more of that. Fantastic. Dave, thank you so much. Keep up the good work. And, you know, we are listening. Oh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Shannon. Thanks so much for the time.